Just on the topic of uh, censorship, what are the words that are uh, legally not allowed on the radio? Well, the FCC doesn't like uh, admitting to themselves that they are censors, so they have never put out a list of words, which makes it impossible to really tell what's allowed and what's not allowed. Although in 1971, I think there was a Supreme Court case uh, called the Seven Dirty Words case uh, regarding a, a George Carlin comedy routine that was broadcast on WBAI. And that sort of set the precedent uh, that there were seven dirty words that you were not allowed to say, you know, like shit, you know, cunt, motherfucker, fuck, words like this. Um, but, th but that never really, that was, a sim that was simply a ruling. Uh, that was one court case, and uh, and in the course of, over the course of the 70s and 80s, uh, the FCC, by their actions, made it very clear that it went way beyond that, that it wasn't limited to those seven words. So there's many other words too, then. Yeah, many other words and a lot of concepts. Um, the FCC um, doesn't provide a list of words you're not allowed to say. They provide a, they provide a concept which is you're not allowed to talk about excretion or excretory behavior or sexual behavior in any way that's offensive to the local community standards. But that's impossible to define. What, what are the local community standards for a city of 8 million people, for example? Um, so uh, all you really have to go by are their actions of the things that seem to get under their goat, uh, the things that they fine people for. But we're in a real holding zone with FCC censorship right now because um, it got it, it, it hit rock bottom after the Super Bowl with Nipplegate, Janet Jackson and Nipplegate. And uh, after that, uh, actually CBS, the network, and Fox, the network, both sued the FCC and, it, and the suit went all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court uh, backed up Fox and CBS and told the FCC, well, you're allowed, you are allowed to uh, enforce indecency standards, but you have to clarify what you mean. And they have not done that since. So it's, everybody's been waiting uh, for the FCC to clarify what their rules are, since even the Supreme Court, even a very conservative Supreme Court, told the FCC that your rules make no sense, it's impossible to follow, can you please clarify them? And they haven't clarified them. So nothing much has been happening, which is good. From my point of view, that's great. There haven't been many fines. Right. Is that yeah. serious? Now, is there, it seems to me that it's an uneven playing field. With the internet, anything goes. For the most part, people hear curses all the time. Things like piss and words like that. I'm late night TV sh talk shows. So is there a double standard that radio is under more scrutiny? Oh, yeah. There's a, a complete double standard because um, it, the rules also don't apply to cable TV. Uh, that the rules don't apply to internet and they don't apply to cable TV. They only apply to broadcast radio and broadcast TV. Um, so yeah, it, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense anymore. Yeah, especially when people don't even think about what they're watching, especially if it's all streamed. They don't think of it as divided into network, uh, cable, and pay for right. TV. Um, is it? Would you say like I remember in the early 80s with the California punk and all the hardcore punk across the US it was really uh, laced with uh, curses and uh, but then like by the time the early 90s came around and sort of gangster rap got popular it seemed to be more like ra the radio versions of songs were like sort of a regular thing is there any sort of parallel between the different genres well the FCC definitely find fine when it was when the FCC was finding radio stations for indecency, which was before Nipplegate, because like I said, there hasn't really been anything happening since Nipplegate, uh, thank goodness. Uh, but prior to Nipplegate, back when, back in the days in the 80s and 90s, uh, when the FCC was finding radio stations on a really regular basis, they were always going after punk, they were always going after hip hop, and they were going after novelty records. And they were especially going after anything, uh, any mention or portrayal of uh, what they consider deviant sex. So any kind of like oral sex so they would consider deviant sex. Anything other than missionary, straight missionary position sex was the kind of thing that ruffled their feathers. So it, it was becoming, it had become somewhat predictable, um, the kinds of things that they would find for. And yeah, punk and hip hop. Uh, generated more fines than anything else. Now, as a U.S. Uh, FCC governed station, what about words that are in foreign language like merde for shit or bollocks, you know, English slang? Uh, do you feel like you have to edit those out? Uh, well, the FCC um, 
they went a really long time before they ever issued the first uh, the for, first fines for non-English broadcast, and so far they've only they've only fined Spanish language stations, and they apparently and they have and they and they they have fined um, Spanish language stations um, a few times now. So, but they've never fined <laughs> they've never fined stations for any languages other than English and Spanish. And I'm not aware that they've uh, I'm not aware that they've ever fined stations even for British slang. Yeah. And how about self-policing? Do you find yourself, uh, there might be some words that you will edit out because uh, you don't find that, you find them offensive personally, even though legally they may not be. Well, the FCC uh, likes it when radio stations come up with their own written policies. So WFMU has always had a, a written policy that establishes, you know, what we're allowed to say and what we're not allowed to say. But again, it doesn't really... Uh, it, it, we give our, our, our internal written policy gives way more detail than the FCC's extremely vague policies. But even our written policy doesn't, you can't possibly address every situation. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, we also go beyond like, you know, we, we, we don't want to tolerate hate speech on the air. Right. And, uh, there's other things. Yeah, and exactly. And, and, and there's other things that you're not allowed to do either. You're not allowed to make threats to threaten violence or to do hoaxes you're not allowed to say like the new jersey turnpike's on fire you but know. can you play a song that says something like that uh it, it depends it, it really it, it really depends it's not black and white yeah unfortunately i mean um and the reason why it's not black and white is because there's not supposed to be censorship in the united states yeah. so then when you have a when you have a government body that sees its job as censorship they set it up so that nobody can accuse them of censorship, which is the worst of all possible worlds, because then nobody knows. Nobody has any idea what they're allowed to do or say or not. Yeah. For my show, I pretty much have to edit every damn song I play. And uh, so sometimes they might send out radio edits, and then there's different ways when I do edits. Um, what are, your, uh, what are your, the, the, your favorite styles of radio edits? Well, I like ish, you know, I like turning things around backwards because then you're not messing up the musical the beats of the song is bad. So if you if you take a word and you and you switch it around backwards, then it, it sounds better, I think, than replacing it with silence or replacing it or just cutting that section out, which makes the song sound really choppy. Yeah. Uh, it sounds better than putting a beep in there. So that's my go to method is is reversing it. Uh, and also what's great about reversing it is that people can usually tell what the word was supposed to have been, I think, which is nice. Right. You know, so they, you know, they know what the song was. But regarding edits, also, there was one famous case that um, uh, Eminem, when Eminem was huge and the real Slim Shady was out as a single, uh, there was a radio edit of that song. And two radio stations got fined for playing the radio edit. The FCC actually fined them each $25,000, even though what they were playing was the radio edit. Because the FCC said, even though the, the bad words were edited out, you could tell what the words were meant to be. So really what, what the FCC was admitting to when they did that is that it's thought police. It's thought policing. It's like when they blur the finger on TV. Right. Uh, so if, if you can discern what was meant, then it's still a violation even if what was meant was never actually said. Yeah. Well, one thing I think you even uh, agreed with me before that uh, I've noticed is that sometimes the word fuck flipped in backwards sounds the same. Yes. If it's said really fast. Yeah. I know. And that's really bad. It's, it's really bad when you're on the air and you're playing a song and uh, you may not know the song inside and out and you hear something and you're not sure. You're not sure what you just heard, and you only have five seconds right. to hit the dump button. So a lot of times, I, when in doubt, you hit the dump button, even if even if you don't know what it was. Was right. it fudge? Was it fuck? Well, for, know, for me, what front? When I'm know. when I'm doing a show, especially remotes, I find myself editing. Like there's one I did recently, and it was the word ship. The guy said about it, I took a trip on this on the high seas on a ship, but I was afraid that the engineer back in the studio might think it was shit and edited right. it out. So I just sort of flipped it anyway yeah but you mentioned the dump button so can you explain for listeners what that is yeah the dump button is a button that you can press uh, after you hear a curse uh, which will get the curse off the air and the way it works is that uh, the radio station is actually on delay so WFMU broadcasts on a 20 second delay uh, so that um, 
th that so that the dump button can actually sort of go back and excise what happened five seconds prior. It's a little hard to explain, but but basically we're on delay so that when we hit the button, we can get rid of what happened in the five seconds prior to hitting the button. But the pro and the, hence the name of your show on uh, Wednesdays. Right, seven second delay. Even though WFMU is really on a. 20 second delay and the reason we're on a 20 second delay is because each um each time you hit the button you're you're getting rid of the previous five seconds yeah. so we have four different dumps of five seconds each so if, if if a song has a fuck on it um you have you have four and a half seconds to hit the button but then what happens is it then takes three minutes to rebuild that five second delay again so the, when I, I did my radio show the other morning and uh, I played a song that I knew had two fucks in it and then I played another song that I thought only had two fucks in it, but it had three. So and so you were doing a live edit where you pot it down and back up? No, I, I decided not to do the live edit because I didn't know the songs well enough. I had listened to them beforehand and I knew that one song had two fucks and they were punk songs and then another song I thought had two fucks, but it had three. By the time I got to the third fuck on the second song, theoretically, I, I wasn't sure whether there was enough in the dump bank to get it. Fortunately, there was. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but it, 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 even even with all, you know, even when you intend to do the right thing, it, it can become really impossible. Uh, one time I did a remote uh, for WFMU from a place in Queens, and I had, I had the bad choice of having these a group of uh, f freestyle rappers come on and who didn't seem to hear what I said about no cursing and then the, back in the studio the engineer had to hit that jump button so many times that uh, I think the sh it kind of went off the air for a while yeah and I've, it, I've and experienced slowed, and it slowed it down like I yeah said. I've experienced the same thing where we, we had uh, a guest on seven second delay one time when we were broadcasting from the UCB theater and he knew he wasn't supposed to curse and he was going out of it he was a comedian and he thought it was funny he was just going out of his way to curse and we ran out of dumps and then the board op had to just go to canned music that was that uh, Billy on the street, right? It was, yeah. I was there. I was there. <laughs> yes. That's his Chelsea neighborhood where he's always uh, doing his thing. It was Billy Eichner, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Cam, for, sure. for, for talking to me about this uh, topic. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.